Good morning, good morning to our beautiful apostle, to our Rapture Ready, Minister, uh, Rapture Ready Ministries family, our guests, and Zoom participants. We give all honor and glory to God. And we'd like to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. I am Deacon Linda Brown. And it is my pleasure and honor to be the worship leader today. So with that, I say, please participate in our worship experience. Amen. Amen. God, please order my steps in your word. You may be seated. I don't want my steps to be going any which way. I just want my steps to be ordered in your word. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk each and every day. I want to be in your word. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to stand before your people. God, we thank you that you have come into this place. Your people have come to hear your word. And Father, as I decrease and you increase in me, Father, help me to speak your word. God, with clarity, God, we know that so many things are going on in this world, but God, we need to know what the order of the house is. And God, we thank you for that today. We thank you for your love. You thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. So Father, in the Holy Spirit, teach and preach this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's give God one more hand clap. Order my steps in your word. In your word, in your word. This morning, I just want to take a few minutes because I want to do a teaching after the service, so I'm going to be short. Uh, but I want you to get the message. I want to talk to us or, or have us to look at the scriptures that we saw in your program. And uh, we want to look at the order in which God requires for his house. The two scriptures that we are using is coming from John chapter 2, verses 14 and 16, also 1 Corinthians 14, one of the familiar verses, 14 and 40. So I'm going to be explaining those just a little bit. One of them uh, is a familiar story. But we live in a day where there's lack of anger and annoyance at wickedness. How many know that everybody seems to be calling things that are right wrong and things that are wrong right? Yeah. Galatians 6 and 7 lets us know, do not be deceived though, for God is not mocked. What he says is what he means. You can water it down all you want, you can digest it all you want, and you can put your own spin on it all you want, but his word is truth. And so we are allowed, we allow anything and everything to go on in the house of God. I've been watching several services um, in different places and watching some things that are going on in the house of God. And Bishop, when he was teaching the 21 day uh, decoration and prayer, he said something that really hit my spirit and he said that you know we have to bring order back in the house of God we are allowing anything and everything to go on in the house of God and that's not acceptable God love his love and his wrath are not opposite we say that God is love but he is also a God of wrath and you will see in in this in the, the scriptures how he is also a God of wrath he is holy, and he expects us to be holy. I didn't say perfect. I said holy. Holiness. That means we are separated from the world's things, the way the world sees things. We are separated from that. We are holiness. We're supposed to have a standard, especially in the church. So the Bible's biblical image of Jesus in our world, and I'm sure that our visitor uh, can, uh, uh, can attest to this, that where she come from, that Jesus is probably a little different there than it is here. 
the Western culture has watered down Jesus. We no longer have the reverence. We no longer have the respect. We no longer, uh, we no, on, no longer look to him as our savior, as the one that's leading us and guiding us. Today's idea of Jesus in our Western world is that he was a weak and he was a mousely person, afraid of his own shadow. He was so meek as to not confront anybody about anything, but we'll find out in the scripture that's not true. However, Jesus could at the same time be compassionate and he could also be harsh. But one thing I want to get in our spirit this morning is that even though he, would, he could do both things, he did not sin. Just as he did not tolerate wickedness, there are issues that we should not tolerate in the house of God. If Jesus had for a second diminished who he was and his holiness, none of us would be here today. We would all be doomed to death and hell. Jesus did not tolerate wickedness. Jesus lived his life as one who was obedient to the law, and he attended all the Passovers and all the festivals that the Jewish people had set up. However, he found some wickedness going to the temple, God's house. Somebody say God's house. God's house. So many times we see things going on in God's house, we're like, wow. They allow that to go on? I can't believe it. When we look at the scripture, uh, John chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, we find some things that disturb Jesus. Every year, you have to remember that the Jews and the Gentiles would come to the temple for a celebration called Passover. That means everybody went to one place, the temple. So verse 14 says, and he found in the temple those who sold, number one, oxen and sheep and dove. So there were three types of animals going on in here being sold. There were sheep, oxen, and dove. And I'll explain that a little bit further. And it says, the money changers were doing business. So here's, here's selling in the house and money changers doing business. Those who sold oxen and sheep and dove, they had to be a special type of animal. They had to be healthy to, in order to be presented to the priest so the priest could take the, the animals as a sacrifice and offer them up to God. So they had to be perfect animals. People coming from all over the place. I don't know how many people have traveled you know, uh, for, for a, a while or maybe you have just gone to spend the night, but you had to pack a bag, right? Yeah. You had to pack something. So people coming from all over the region could not pack their animals because they would be dead. So they had no choice but to buy animals at the temple. Now, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Here was the problem. They were selling the animals for a price that was astronomical outrageous. Jesus said, no, you can't do that. This is my father's house. You can't sell the animals to the people and charge them ex uh, astronomical prices. That's not of God. When we are selling things and we are doing things at, at, at the house of God, we should have in mind a price that is not going to exploit the people. This is what Jesus was saying. Don't sell things that's going to be astronomical, overpriced for people. That's what the world does. If you don't believe it, look at your gas prices. You don't believe it, look at the food prices. Every time some, the market goes up, something changes. Is that right? No, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And the middle class is paying for it all. Jesus says, I don't want you to do that in my house. Those who made the pilgrimage or the, or the trips from other parts of Israel had to purchase their sacrifices, offering at the temple. They had no choice, remember? Trade, traders sold animals for sacrifices in, out in the outer courts. They weren't in the temple, they were out in the courts. Before you could get into the, court, into the temple, you had to go through the outer court. 
The issue was that they were being exploited, and Jesus was not happy. And so then he looked at what was going on in the house, and he said, well, wait a minute. I see something else. There are money changers doing business. Now, I don't know how many people have traveled outside of the United States and have had an opportunity to exchange money. I remember going to Canada one year, and I was so happy that when, my, when I gave them a $10 bill, they gave me back $15 of their money. I was happy. But I wasn't happy when I had to change back their money into American money. I wasn't too happy because I got less. But that meant my money, United States money, was more than Canada's money, was worth more than Canada's money, which meant I could buy more. And so I went on a, a, a shopping spree because I had more money. So here we go. Here we go. The money changers was also similar to that. I brought that in because I want you to see the, the reality of it. Since the priest couldn't touch coins that bore, that, that, that bore the Caesar image. In other words, now listen, let me go to Canada. The priest could not touch Canada money. It had to be a special money. So the people were coming from all over the place with different types of money. It had to be changed into the money that would be acceptable for the priest to touch. Y'all got it? All right. So here's what they were doing. So since the priest could not touch any, anything that had Caesar's image on it, the people first had to change their money for a fee. Here we go. Here we go. Now suppose Canada had charged me for changing my money, my $10 bill, to $15. Suppose they had put on a, another charge. I would have had to pay it. I had no choice. I'm in Canada. I need, to be, I need to do what the Canadians would be doing. I need to make sure that I can buy food because American money was not taken. It had to be Canada money. Okay, y'all got me? Okay, so the people had no choice but to change their money into the money that was acceptable for the priest to be handling, and there was a charge. That didn't sit well with Jesus. So the Jewish leaders and their merchants at the temple were making money twice. They made money by selling the animals. They made money by exchanging different types of money, currency. And the sale of the animals and the people, Jesus had empathy about this. He says, wait a minute, y'all don't have to do this, especially in my father's house. So judgment, how many know that judgment begins at the house? Judgment begins here. When I don't tell you the right thing to do, it's going to fall on me. God is going to hold me accountable because I didn't tell you that, and I knew better. So judgment begins at the house, and Jesus took it upon himself. Let me do something about this mess. So verse 15 goes on and said, when he had made a whip of cords. Now, let me tell you about this whip of cords. I don't know how many of you are familiar with horse whips, but they are very strong and, they, and they're intertwined together. So it was like three cords mixed together into one whip. This is what Jesus had. I don't know where he found it. I don't know if he brought it with him. I don't know nothing about that, so don't ask me that. I don't know where he got the whip from, but he had a whip. And he drove them out, verse 15 says, when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' monies, and he overturned the tables. Now, he was really hot because something was going on in the house of God that shouldn't have been going on. And by the way, it was going on so heavily, the worship couldn't even be heard. So Jesus was very upset. I was watching something yesterday that really disturbed me. And while the worship was going on, and don't you all, please don't do this. Don't go nowhere and do this, please. While the worship was going on, there were about 25 cameras. I said, wow. They can't even get into the worship. They're so busy filming. 
That's not acceptable in God's house. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Please do not do that. If you're going to, if you're going to take pictures in the house, take it from your seat. But please do not. That's disturbing people. People are watching you. People can't even get into the, the worship because they're watching you. What are you doing? Walking around. You. Wait a minute. That's not what God, that's not what you do in God's house. I know that's what some people do, but that's not what we do. When worship and praise is going on, you need to be a part of that. We don't need to be spectating. You need to be trying to get some praise and worship on for yourself. You don't know what's facing you next week. Amen. You don't know what the enemy has planned for you. And if you praise and worship today, you'll have enough energy for the, the defeat that enemy next week. Amen. Or maybe when you get outside the door. So that disturbed me, and I've been watching that for a while, how people in the house of God will take their cameras, and we all got them, we all got them, thank God for them, but we're using them for the wrong thing. We are, instead of listening, and instead of worshiping and praising God, we are spectators. And I know that there are artists that are coming to our area, and there are things that are going on in our area, that we want, we want to take pictures of and we want to make sure that we, you know, can remember them. But please be respectful in the house of God. Amen? Amen. I'm talking about the house of God. Amen. And so judgment begins at the house of God. I know it, this is not a shout message, but this is something necessary that we need to know. And God is holding me accountable not for to tell you what's right and what's wrong. So... Having seen the disgrace taking place in the temple and the courtyard, Jesus took a swift action, and he rectified some things. Now, whenever you rectify wrong in front of folks that don't want to be rectified, you got a problem. 15 says, when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with sheep and oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. The Lord turned over the money changers' tables and he spilled money on the ground. Jesus was not out of control. I can imagine him going in forcefully and turning over the tables and saying, not in my house, but he was not out of control. He was not out of control with anger. How many of us see things, how many times we see things and we are angry about those things and we do the wrong thing instead of the right thing? It's just how we speak to people about different, different situations is how God is looking at how we represent him. Amen? How are we representing him? So Jesus was not out of control with anger. Yeah, he was angry, but guess what? He did not sin. He didn't curse. He didn't, he didn't do unseemly things. He just says, get out. Get out. Ephesians, if we would look at Ephesians chapter 4, 26 through 27, I like what the Message Bible says. It says, go ahead and be angry. That's an emotion. We can be angry. You do well to be angry. Yes, we do well to be angry about things that are not right. But don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry, y'all. You know how we are. We hold grudges for the next 25 years. No, don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil the kind of foothold in your life. The principle of this is Jesus is the ultimate answer for the sin problem. Take it to Jesus. A lot of times we get angry and we mess up because we sin. We say things, we do things that are not acceptable. That's why we have to ask for forgiveness every day, each and every day. We sin by word, thought, or deed. The things that we think, the things that we do, the things that we say, we are sin. We do sinful things, but we ask God for forgiveness. And don't go back and do those things over and over and over again. Don't make them a habit. God is a God of forgiveness. But I can imagine God says, listen, I had enough now. You should know better by now. Let's do something different. 
So he was telling, Jesus was telling the people in the temple, you know, this is God's house. There is an order and there's a respect in God's house. Some may view Jesus' actions of cleaning the temple and showing a radical revolution, but no doubt many thought that in Jesus' day as well. Somebody may have thought Jesus had lost his mind because of what he had done. But mind you, this had been going on for years until Jesus arrived. Mind you that he was on his way to the last mission in his life. He was about to set things straight. It was not attempt to establish a paradise like they thought. Jesus did not come to, to establish a paradise. He did not come to deliver them from the government. He came to set them free from sin. So he, no doubt in his mind, he said, I've got a job to do, and this is what I have to do. Just as we are sitting here today, I have a job to do, to tell you what's right and to tell you what's wrong. It's up to you what you do with it. But in this house, let's do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Let's do the right thing. Later, he would be fulfilled, Jesus would be fulfilled with the great assignment of going to the cross. No more animal sacrifices were needed. No more doves and pigeons and all of those things needed to be bought because he was the sacrifice. Thank God for the sacrifice. But we go on to verse 16, and verse 16 says, And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, I explained about the oxen and the sheep, but there were doves as well. The doves here may have been pigeons. They weren't even doves. They were pigeons. And they were being offered by poor people, people that couldn't have oxen and people that couldn't have the sheep. But they had to bring something as a sacrifice. How many know that, that your sacrifice to God, it may not be like somebody else's sacrifice, but what you give to God is your best. What they had was their best. The pigeon was all that they had. So they brought the pigeon as a sacrifice unto God. And it says, he says, he says, take them away. I want you to take the pigeons away too. Get them out of here. I don't want nothing to do in this house. So the doves may have been pigeons, as I said. The doves were offerings for the, of the poor. And he expressed the wrath of that as well. He says it would not, he would not tolerate the difference between the animals at all. He said all of them get out. All of them get out of this house. Do not make my father's house the house of merchandise. Now, the temple was the nerve center. Just like today, our nerve center is right here. Because we're here, right here at Rapture Ready Ministry. And so people have to come in to worship and praise God. We want to make sure that when they come into this house, that they are welcome, that they're not exploited, that we love them, we tell them the truth, and God, that we fellowship with one another. Amen? Amen? This is what we do as the family. We are called the family. We don't want to commercialize. We don't want to make sure that our, our family feels exploited when we come into the house of God. We want to make things acceptable. We want to make things more, more acceptable in the house than there, there is in the world. If we are like the world, then what's the difference? How can we get people in the house when they say that you look like the world? We don't want to look like the world. So we want to take heed to what we do in the house of God. Now this brings me to 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and verse 40. This familiar verse that we always say a lot of times when we have meetings and things that are going on in the house. It took a long time to get us to this point because I don't know how many of us have come from different 
churches and different areas and different things that when you have a church meeting, it was like having a hellion meeting. People would be, be so disrespectful and so out of order. That's not what God wants us to do in his house. So 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 says, let all things be done decency and in order. In order. Paul includes in 1 Corinthians 14, not only Jesus. Now I'm going to jump from Jesus and throwing over the temple, I mean, throwing over things in the temple and driving things out in his house. And I'm going to Paul. Now Paul is talking about a, a general rule that's in the house. It's part of a passage that runs from verses, 13, from verses 36 to verse 40, where Paul is rebuking the Corinthians for their extreme pride. Here we go. I'm going from money exchanging to pride. That's in the house too, you know. Extreme pride in having spiritual gifts and their childish behavior in the congregation of the church. The New Testament writer lets us know, gives us the one and only rule to follow while we're in God's house. And he's saying that we need to be respectable. We need to be loving. We need to show God's character in God's house. The New Testament writer gives us only this one rule in regards to this question of what is acceptable and appropriate in worship. The rule is found in 1 Corinthians, of course, and I told you verses uh, 14, uh, chapter 14, verses 40, where the Apostle Paul is telling, let all things, let all things, somebody say all things, all things, all meetings, all rehearsals, all things that are going on in the house of God to be decency, be done in decency and in order. Well, wait a minute. Some people don't even know what decency is because they've been in the street so long and they act just like the street. So they bring the street into the church. But we are here as to say, no, baby, settle it down. This is not what we do. This is not how we act. This is not what God's character is in the house. Now, hopefully you take what you learned in the house and take to the streets so that when you go to your job, when you go home with your family, when you're out with your friends, that you still display the same decency and order. Every human being deserves order and decency. Every human being. It does not matter how they treat you. It's how you treat them. They may cuss you out. And for all of those that work with the public, some days you call on Jesus 24-7. Lord, help us. Help me, Lord, when they're cussing you out. Lord, help me. Help me. I don't understand. Oh, Lord, help me. Sometimes you just have to just sit there and say, Mm, okay. Okay. I'm going to let you get that out. I remember when we were at work, oh, we would be on a telephone and people would be calling in and all kinds of things would happen. I got some stories from social services. I got some real stories. I remember people used to come to the front desk and we didn't have a glass. At the, to, we didn't have a glass like, like y'all got now. They would spit on us. Spit on us. And we were like, Whoa, all kinds of things people will do to you, but it's how you treat people. I remember working at the front desk, and one lady told me, she said, you're not from here, are you? I said, yes, ma'am, I was born here. She said, well, you don't act like it. I was like, okay, how am I supposed to act? <laughs> because decency and respectfulness is due to everyone. It's how you treat them, not how they treat you. And that takes some Jesus, y'all. Some real Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to find him then. Because you want to get with those people. So you have to back down and say, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. I'm a, king, I'm a king's kid. I'm not going through this. Not long. Because guess what? I learned in the house how I'm supposed to treat people. I learned from the church. I learned from God's word how I'm supposed to treat people. And this is not the way I'm supposed to do. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, take control. Many days I had to back up and say, okay, 
back, I had to say, okay, I'm, you know what? Okay, just, just let you vent for a little bit. And then I'm going to sit back and say, okay, now, let, now, now, now let's talk about this. How are we going to do this? But it takes, it takes the, the Christ that's in us to show others Christ. Amen. If we don't have Christ in us, how are you going to show somebody else Christ? When you all messed up, you haven't been taught. How are you going to show somebody else the love of Christ? So this is what Paul is talking about. Let everything be done in decency and in order. Now, I want to take it a little bit further, not only in the house. Your character should be done decency and in order. That's not easy, y'all. We have flesh. We want to go left. When God says go right, we want to go right. When God says go left, but we have to bring ourselves in subjection to the Holy Spirit and say, listen, I'm not going that way today. Amen. Corinthians 4, 4, 14 and 40 also lets us know the truth about how God feels about our style of worship. Here we go. We're going to probably get people in this sanctuary from all types of churches and, and all types of worship. Some people worship loud. Some people worship softly. Some people raise their hands. Some people, some people do different things in their worship. God is more interested in the condition of your heart than he is in the, in the condition of how you want to worship. I've been to churches where if you say amen, everybody look at you. What? She said amen? Oh, okay, I got to get up out of here. Because y'all don't, don't want to worship God. So how we worship, the style that we worship is not important to God. It's our heart, how we worship God. It's the condition of our heart. So instead of focusing on who has the best form of worship, oh, I can't worship. Y'all know Dixie. Everybody know Dixie? Mm -hmm. I can't worship like that. I will not worship like Dixie. Mm -hmm. But that's Dixie. There are plenty of people that go all out for their worship. And it's fine because you don't know their story. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what God delivered them from. Amen. So let them worship God. Yeah. And you know what? While you're spectating on them, maybe you'll catch on fire too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because we need some true worshipers. Yeah. God said, worship me in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So don't worry about what somebody else is doing. You just be concentrating on you. What you can do to honor God in his house. We're talking about believers coming together to worship the almighty God. Therefore, when we plan corporate worship, it should be well thought out and organized. Didn't you have a program this morning? It's the order of worship. God is a God of order. He's a God of planning. He's a God of making things straight, not confusion. And so this is what we do in God's house. We make sure that things are plain. Things are working well. Things are going to, according to the worship service and what's, what, the house have, what the house expects of each and every one of us. So instead, of, again, I said, instead of work, work, focusing on what somebody else is doing, focus on giving praise and thanks to God. Your style of worship, of course, may vary from each and every one of us. A group of believers can be bold and loud and well-mannered all at the same time. They can also be soft and quiet, while at the same time, there could be some that are rude and offensive. Hope that doesn't happen here. Because as, 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 as Deacon Lynn says, oof, I can, see, I can see me walking quickly down to you and say, will you sit down? Okay, in God's house, okay, let's, let, let's get together. We can, we can all worship together. The style used of instruments and different things that we use in the house is very important to God. But it must be done in decency and in order. He is watching to see how much energy that we have toward worship and praising him. He's watching to see what we're doing in his house. So make sure that you're in order and make sure that you're doing things appropriate to the house. Every house has its rules. Every house. 
My house might not be like your house, but every house has a rule. Make sure that you're abiding by the rules. I remember going to, some years ago, I went to one of my son's churches that he ministers to, um, uh, music to, and, and at that time, those people did not wear pants. And so he told me, I know that's weird now. I know it's weird back, back some years ago. And some people still don't. But you have to honor that house. And I remember I was going to speak at some women's uh, service that they had there. And he said, Mom, remember, they don't wear pants. I said, yeah, I know, I know, I know. They don't wear pants. So what did I have to do? I had to wear a dress. Be respectful of the house rules. Whatever the house has in place, that's what you do. As, as the saying says, when you're in Rome, you do what the Romans do. Because that's God's house. God has, a, has th those leaders have set up a standard for their house, and that's what you do. So don't be out of order, you all. Just, just remember where you are and who you're serving. Remember that worship and praise is very important in the house of God. Remember that you don't go in the house of God with your rudeness. Remember that you are respectful to everyone. Everyone is your brother and your sister. And so you treat them as if they are your brothers and your sisters. Now, I know some of us have brothers and sisters. We don't even like them. But that's not the case here. The case is we love everybody, and you treat everybody respectful. Amen? Amen. 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 So notice in both scriptures, Jesus and the apostle Paul was not addressing the style of worship going on in the temple or, or the style of worship that was going on with the Corinthians. They were addressing the order. There's an order of what should be accepted in God's house. And one thing I can see that's running, running very popular, and I just mentioned that earlier, was it's running very popular now is the cameras. Everybody has a camera on their phone. But please be respectful as to how you're using it, how you are in God's house. Are you getting anything out of the service, or you just come to film? If you came to film, you came for the wrong thing. This is the house of God. You came for worship and praise. And so when you are distracting others and you are doing things that are out of order, God is not pleased. So make sure that you are in order. Make sure that you are worshiping and praising God when you come to his house. Amen? Amen. Give God a hand praise and let's stand to your feet. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to sow a seed, you may do so by Cash App. Dollar sign R R M S A L I S B U R Y M D or by mailing your seed to Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated 368 Cary Avenue. Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Also, please follow us on Facebook at Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated. May God's continuous blessings be with you and your family. Hello, I am Elder Dr. Sharon Washington. Our ministry is in the process of building a new sanctuary that will be a blessing for our growing congregation and community. To complete our new construction project, we are soliciting support from generous individuals, ministries, and businesses. There are several projects we have initiated to help generate funds, such as purchasing a leaf from our fundraising tree at $100 a leaf or planting a seed offering of any amount. You may send your donation by cash app address dollar sign R-R-M-S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y 